Welcome to Cozumel. Beautiful island. Cute little dogs. Gorgeous flowers. And a few goofy looking tourists. And some of the best scuba diving in the world. And if you find yourself enjoying this video, please feel free to subscribe. And we always appreciate it when you smash that like button. The island of Cozumel actually sits off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula, and believe it or not, it's actually 346 miles as the crow flies from Havana, Cuba. You don't realize just how far out to the east that uh, peninsula extends. For our visit, we stayed at the Hotel Cozumel, which is conveniently located just across the street from Dive Paradise, which of course has some beautiful facilities right on the water really convenient from your hotel no need to take any taxis or transfers there's actually a tunnel underneath the road between the two our first dives were on the felipe zico tencatl i know i didn't pronounce that properly so i think we'll just stick to calling it the c53 for simplicity's sake The ship was named after Felipe Santiago Zico Tencatl. He was a uh, colonel in the Mexican army under President Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana. They fought in the 1800s. The ship was originally built in 1944 and was a minesweeper for the U.S. Navy. And for the U.S. Navy, it was named the Scuffles. In 1962, she was sold to the Mexican Navy and converted into a gunboat and renamed the Felipe Zico Contentacle C-53. That is a really hard name to pronounce <laughs> for Americans. These hatchet fish were really interesting. I think I kind of freaked out the dive guide because I uh, followed up the rear quite late and they might have thought that something was wrong, but I just couldn't resist getting a shot. That's my wife Amy in the purple split fins. Uh, I don't know who that is to her right as some other diver. She must be fairly new though because kept doing, giving me the let's swim up sign. I, I think she was asking if I was okay. So the camera I use for filming my underwater videos is a Canon uh, 70D with an Icolite two-gripped housing. Going through the penetration there was a little bit of a challenge because it's a pretty bulky camera by today's standards, but I, I, I've owned it for a long time and I really enjoy the, the footage. It's got a big dome port on it, which you probably noticed in some of those shots. Uh, the bubbles tend to collect on the dome port, so you've really got to be mindful of getting those off of there, which I wasn't. I was fairly distracted. Uh, but we had a good group of people on this dive. Then nobody crowded each other too much, which can happen on a wreck dive when you get in confined spaces. You can see there we're at 70 feet of water. So after 55 years of service, the C-53 was decommissioned and later donated to the Cozumel Underwater Park. She was sunk in 1999 in 82 feet of water, just off the shore from Chakanab Park. There's that same lady again. She seems pretty happy to have her picture taken or video. I, I hope she didn't think I was a professional and was going to sell these at the end. Um, sometimes people think that on groups like this when you see somebody with a great big camera like mine. Um, get a little smile in there. She's enjoying herself. It's a beautiful wreck. Conditions were good. Current wasn't too bad. Sometimes it can be along Cozumel. And we're heading to the aft section here. You can still see the aft propellers. Getting pretty rusty. So 
usually no shortage of spiny lobsters hanging around wrecks like this. And you probably can't see it very well in this shot, but Amy didn't really rinse out her um, mask very well after putting baby soap in it, which is what she used as anti-fog. And it started to get into her eyes later in this dive, and in fact she had to skip out the second dive because it got so bad. It really irritated her eyes. Uh, it took a full day to get that cleared up. I really like this shot right here. That's her down on the right there. Um, it's beautiful. So on our second dive, it was a much shallower one, um, fairly uneventful. In fact, I'd say by Cosmel standards, kind of boring almost. Uh, I had to fly solo because Amy was back on the boat nursing her eyes back to health. Poor thing. She was pretty miserable. I mean, still the worst day of diving is better than the best day in an office though, right? If you're ever out on a dive, these sea sponges are really kind of an interesting thing to look at. A lot of people just swim right over them, but if you take your time and look down in the tubes, there's actually a lot of life in them. Sometimes some interesting critters hang out there. This uh, spiny lobster seemed rather uh, confident in his ability to cross out in the open like that. It seemed like it made him easy prey for somebody who wanted a lobster dinner. So this is a drift dive. Uh, here's the dive guide. He's inflating the marker which is indicating to the boat to come pick us up, hopefully quickly. So the nice thing on drift dives, it's a very leisurely way of diving. Uh, here we're just kind of slowly making our way to the surface, letting our bodies breathe off those harmful gases that you accumulate while you're at depth at pressure. It's um, it's also just a nice way to just chill out and listen to the bubbles and I, I never race for the surface unless of course I'm running out of air. I usually let everybody kind of get up there and get through all the chaos and get on the boat. It seems like the newer divers are anxious to get up there fast but the more experienced ones just kind of hang out and uh, enjoy the whole experience. What are you doing? Are you videotaping me? What have you got? Under the Nintendo Hill, what have you been doing? <laughs> yes, the resort wine is less than satisfactory. Hopefully, this will be better. Hopefully. We're kind of wine snobs. Not, not really snobby snobs, but uh, we do appreciate a decent bottle of wine not that it has to be expensive or anything like that but oftentimes resorts especially in warm weather climates like this tend to have uh, kind of crummy wine and there's nothing we hate more than uh, having to drink out of plastic cups so which frequently they want to give you if you're going to be here. Hey where are we going now? Warm the water. And describe to the viewers on YouTube oh, what we're doing. <laughs> we're sneaking glass of wine. We did. We wine stole glasses. them out of there because the <laughs> steward was staring at us and glaring at us, but we smuggled them out and because we want to go down by the beach. To drink wine out of a plastic cup. <laughs> yes, and we want to go down by the beach and drink a glass of wine from a yeah, okay, uh, okay bottle of Spanish wine. We sure miss our wine at home. 
<laughs> this uh, tunnel goes underneath the street, underneath the highway, and connects the main resort with the beach scuba club. So it's a safer way to get there. And it feels like a long walk. It feels like we're going to an airport. And some days they serve food over here. There's the restaurant, all dark. Nobody's here. Nobody's here. Here's the scuba shop, all locked up. And here's the gear lockers. No. The next day's dives were drift dives. Amy's eyes were better now, and she was feeling up to it. Uh, these were really good conditions for diving that day, I felt like. There's a beautiful French angel fish right there. Uh, currents weren't too strong. Nothing worse than really strong current. Of course, in Cozumel, there's always some kind of current uh, driving things, um, which is also what brings so much life to these reefs especially with the sponges and whatnot. Uh, plentiful food is there for animals, which is what makes these such great spots to dive in. Some areas of these reefs provide uh, really nice swim-throughs. It's a bit of a challenge with a big group because oftentimes people just kick real hard to uh, swim through them. The real trick is to kind of frog kick and do it as little as you can so you don't kick dust up behind everybody. And that one Amy did pretty well with that. It's pretty proud of her. Two of my favorite fish, uh, those are queen angel fish. They're just gorgeous. You can see everybody's having a pretty relaxing time and somebody spotted, that's a spotted drum fish is what that's called. They're kind of reclusive, so it's pretty interesting when somebody can find one. Occasionally on the reefs, you see some larger animals like this nurse shark. I'm not gonna cue the stupid Jaws music because they have mouths more like vacuum cleaners than they do uh, actual shark. In the traditional sense, they're not gonna bite you, they're not gonna hurt you, so no need to freak out whenever you see a nurse shark in the wild. So we did a surface interval while motoring to our next dive site. My dome port doesn't film outside very well. It's better in the water. So on our second dives of the day, these, um, these were a bit deeper than most of the others. And there were quite a few swim throughs at the beginning of it. Uh, as you can see here, Amy's doing pretty good keeping her feet from kicking up all that dust that can make the fellow divers miserable. Uh, there's a light current going through here, not too bad, so it's a nice relaxing drift. Lots to see on this reef. I don't remember the name of it, unfortunately. I haven't written all that stuff down. They're all in Cozumel. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, these were a, a bit deeper than we came shallow at the end, uh, but it was really fun. As you can see here, we got down to 81 feet. That's fairly deep enough. Not much to see below that, typically. And there's Amy going really good. The fin control's really impressive. I'm proud of my wife. She's become a fairly skilled diver for a newbie. I drive her nuts sometimes with my videography, though. Um, in this situation, I, I end up going over 
the swim through just because I find the bubbles more interesting and uh, frequently she finds herself wondering what the hell happened to her dive buddy because she'll turn around and swim through and I'm not there. I think she's starting to get used to it now, but I don't know, I like these shots. I think they're more interesting sometimes than going through the swim through because sometimes in the swim through there's really not much to see in there. It's just kind of a novelty. So as you can see here, we're starting to come a little more shallow with a good dive plan. That's how a dive should work. You start off deep, then you come shallow, off-gassing along the way in a nice, relaxing, interesting way. I love to film goatfish. They're really interesting. If you ever see them out on a reef, uh, they've got these two little probes on either side of their mouths, and they go around and they stir up stuff in the sand. That's a rare shot of me, actually, in the video. Normally, I'm never in them. With the cruise ship docks just to the north, it's inevitable you're going to see some groups of snorkelers. They were uh, really interested in seeing us down there. We did finally see a sea turtle. He didn't seem to want to hang around to let me film him much, though. So that ended our diving. We only did two days of diving. Unfortunately, I hurt my back uh, on one of the dives and getting in and out of the boat, so I was kind of not feeling the greatest. So we really only did about two days of diving. In an effort to help my back heal, we uh, decided to take several walks. Sometimes that really helps uh, when I have a sore back like I get. Uh, so we took a walk into town. I think this is the Mexican version of Walmart, maybe? Mega? Don't know. You can typically tell you're getting close to a cruise ship dock with the appearance of all of the souvenir shops lining the streets. They have some interesting stuff. It's kind of fun to browse sometimes. It can sometimes be a little too much pressure. So since we were in a foreign country, we wanted to try something local and really exotic. So we found uh, this interesting place we'd never heard of before. We assume they have like really good Mexican coffee maybe? It's kind of hard to escape American culture when you've got this type of thing all over the cruise ship ports. But it's the way the world is. The world's gotten a lot smaller and there's nothing I can do about it. Except enjoy it.
bit of chaos. Whenever you walk the streets of God's No, thank you, Al. <laughs> they always have a tagline or something to try to get you to respond to them. The worst thing you can do is engage in conversation. No, thank you. I don't smoke. No, I never had a cigar in my life. I was actually lying through my teeth. I smoke cigars all too much, frankly. Usually what they're peddling is cheap knockoff Cohibas. Even though it looks like real Cohibas, they're usually crap. Occasionally you come by a legitimate cigar shop, and with a name like Havana Bob's, it had to be good. Even though some of these stores have dumb names, occasionally you see one that has a rather creative one. We got the biggest kick out of this little guy. He was just so cute and so mellow. Uh, he reminded us a lot of our dog, Harley, who's a Chewini. So it was for the rest of the afternoon, we spent uh, fending off peddlers, enjoying a decent meal, and seeking out some actual culture mixed in. At times, I found myself wanting to be back underwater, even back pain and all. But then occasionally you run across a spot like this in a moment where you could see a child still be a child. It kind of makes it all worthwhile. After a fun time scuba diving, sitting by the pool, getting accosted by sh shop peddlers, <laughs> it was time to go home. So we made the ferry crossing back from Cozumel to Playa del Carmen, and then up to the airport in Cozum er, uh, Cancun. Bit of travel advice if you're going to be staying over in the Playa del Carmen area or Cancun area and want to dive in Cozumel, it is a fairly long process to get over there. It's going to be a whole day of scuba diving. So if, you, if diving is what you're mainly going for, you might want to stay in Cozumel. And don't go during spring break because we did. It was dictated to me because we were down there for an event for my work, but it was chaos getting home. Thanks for watching. <laughs>